I don't know why we're asking this question now, but I was actually asked this in Facebook today. I was I wanted to make a video on it. Is the Orcust hype that's going on right now in the community worth buying into, or should you stay away from this deck? Um, my thoughts, opinions on this, as asked from one duelist. So let's dig on into a little interesting discussion on Orcust, shall we? All right, so if you live under a rock, I really hope that you don't, and that you're sticking together with the game, you notice that Orcust has been doing something since last format. Now, the whole deck, the, the engine that you needed, was hella cheap. Anybody could afford that. Literally $10 for one orchestrated return and a bunch of shit commons was literally what you needed for your deck. Now, we head into this point in time, we're coming off of Nashville, or excuse me, Knoxville this weekend. I keep getting those two confused. YCS Tennessee this weekend. And we saw that the most represented deck in Top Cut was some sort of Orcust variant. So the question that I was asked was, should I buy Orcust or should I not worry about it? So one big thing that you need to understand about Orcust right now is you need either one or two Dingrisus. I'm going to go with the heavier approach here, and we're going to say two Dingrisus. That's $80. All right, that's a lot more money than I think the average person is going to want to spend on a splashable engine. And that's something particularly interesting about this. This Orcust as a whole, as a deck, is an engine that can go in anything. So if you are willing to spend the $80 on having two Dingrisus, lighter case you can get away with one, depending on your build. It depends on what you're trying to do. All right. So the Orcust engine can be splash anything. We had Cyber Dragon Orcust. I've seen ABC Orcust. Yeah, I know, right? Blackwing Orcust. Sky Strike Orcust. Goki Orcust. Warrior Toolbox Arcus. You, you guys get what I'm saying here. Like, you can combine this with anything, Thunder Dragons, and you can get away with playing it. But is that tech ability worth it? Is that where we're going in this format? So I think the answer is yes. But Devil's Advocate Robbie says no. So why we're looking at yes here is we're heading into the WCQ. If you're planning on playing Yu-Gi-Oh for a chunk of the summer and you're planning on playing WCQ, and Orcust is something that you want to play, absolutely pick it up. All right, you're you're not doing yourself a disservice if it's the deck that you are looking to play. Now, that's all fine and dandy, you know, you have to understand that possibility of a ban list rolling around the court. I I'm starting to think that something's going to happen to Orcust. When you have an engine like this, and it's just splashable and everything, then that's kind of the time that I think Konami wants to look at it, look at the situation and go, huh, is this engine, because literally, I don't give a fuck if you're playing Trick Stars, Sky Striker, a Warrior Toolbox with your deck. It's literally da-da-da, Orcust, all right? like. That's your deck. You still on on the same fucking double fog blade, dingrusu bullshit that the other seventeen fucking variants over in the corner are doing. The only thing that you are doing different is how you get from point A to point B. Inspirational math quote, by the way. Uh, this is from one of my college professors. It's always stuck with me. Um, they always say that college is worthless. You're not gonna learn anything if you're in this profession. Absolutely wrong. So I had a college professor back in the day. They said, I don't give a shit how you fucking solve the problem. It's about the journey. It's how you fucking get there. So, I don't give a fuck that your deck's Orcust. Alright, like, the cards that you're playing to get there, it, it's the end result. I butchered that horribly, but it doesn't fucking matter. So, so here's the thing. If you're looking to play the WCQ, or if you want to be the big dick McGee at Locals, you're like, ah, I just got my fucking paycheck from Walmart, fucking McDonald's, I've been working my ass off, I want to play some Orcus this week. Fucking pick up the deck. Sure. Now, on the flip side of the equation, Devil's Advocate Robbie says, <laughs> I smell a ban list around the corner. I'm, I'm always very overly cautious with these things, because if my friend's not playing it, I'm like, we should probably sell it, you know, because I don't like losing money. 
says Robbie, who has a Danger Core, who has Thunder, who has Salad, who has six Phantasmies, so that multiple people can play. Says Robbie, who plays Sky Striker, who doesn't play any of that. Right? Fucking real ironic. So, I'm like, we're just fucking bleeding money here. Like, it's my job, but that's, that's the cost of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! So, at this point in time, it's like, well, you know... Probably you should sell those things, but my friend's like, I want to keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm like, I like watching you play Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, it's little things like that. So, if you are not worried about a ban list, if you're not worried about some sort of hit to Rusty, I I don't know what they could possibly approach on a list at this point. I've always said Rusty was the problem, and I've always been called dumb as fuck in my comments section for saying that. I said that last list that Rusty was probably the real card that we should have hit, but you know, fucking what do I know? You know, Double Fog Blade's not inherently terrible to play around, it's just kind of everything else that comes. Then I make the comment, it's like, you know, Mermaid is pretty broken, you know, she starts the whole combo, and also everybody's like, you know what you're fucking talking about? Like, generic S combos that go in every deck. Just, you guys have to understand that. Konami doesn't like that. Especially if Orcus is going to remain this consistent powerhouse and nothing's going to check it throughout all time. Nobody's buying a new product. Like, hello? Hello? This... I can't wait for the day that I get to see Witchcraft Orcus. Because that's the bar that's your next 500 IQ of play. Make me Witchcraft Orcus so I can watch you play it and then horribly cry when it actually works. So... <sighs> I, I, the Orcus engine is too fucking splashable, but if you're a player and you have it, you can play anything with it. You know, I think that's probably the coolest fucking thing about it. I, I'm still really happy to have seen Cyber Dragon Orcus actually do something. Because literally a Cyber Dragon contacts out with any sort of threat on the opponent's field. And you're like, okay, cool, let me play my stuff. We have the Evil Eye Orcus list, which, granted, <laughs> playing Evil Eye... Um, in a deck like that is particularly interesting. We're never going to see true Draco Orcus. That's that's not going to fucking happen. To the one person that's going to comment and said that you perfected the deck, no. You actually didn't. It sounds terrible. Alright. <laughs> We're not doing that. Alright, that, that, that's bad. Honestly. And then... <sighs> Splashability is what makes it good. And I think I don't think we're gonna see anything too spicy come out of the WCQ here, especially if you're aiming to pick up this deck. You have to understand like you're either gonna play it with the Trickstar package, which is Light Stage for Candina for Coral Vine, which literally smash your monsters together and go. You know, Light Stage helps out these pain in the ass back row, uh, kind of speeds up the process, which is really good. That's what we like to see. Cards that can help 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 out other cards. And you know, you've got the Sky Striker package on the other side, Hornet Drones, Engages. Uh, I don't think we're splashing Widow Anchor in that variant. We could be, you know, but just little extra things that you gotta do to just get to your two card combo and really go. I mean, there's, there's no, like, real resilience against the deck. It's whatever engine you're combining Orcus with that gives you the extra oof. You know, if you're playing literally Thunder Dragon Orcus, you know, you get to do all the Thunder Dragon shenanigans, set up Colossus plus Dingrisu Interruption. It's, if you're picking this up, you have to have a viable secondary strategy ready to go with the deck. It's the engine itself, the Fog Blades, the Rusty, the Dingrisu that you set up, that's kind of like the backbone. It's the extra sugar coating that you kind of get from the rest of the package that kind of really brings the meal together. God, we're comparing Orcas to food now. That is the time that we live in. So, mildly, if you're going to the WCQ, I would give some real consideration to playing something Orcas related. Coming off of the last couple weekends, we've definitely seen that the combo variations and the ideas of merging these concepts together works. There is success to be had with these ideas. On the flip side, if you're worried about selling these, I don't think Dingrees is going to go much higher than this. I Maybe WCQ, you might see them at 45 in some vendor cases, but as soon as that event's over, the card prices are going to come shooting down. I expect to see a lot of crashes. We'll probably see Dingrisu go back down to 30. Uh, we also have an unlimited printing right around the corner for Ding Ding, which is another major thing to consider right now, is if you want to wait and risk it, unlimited printing's right around the corner. So 
there could be some sort of shift in value, but with the, the last competitive event for the season right around the corner, I mean, that is going to be a big factor on the secondary market. So just a little things to consider for that. So a bit of a yes and no answer. Right? I, it might not really help you, but I like to give both sides of the equation. Like WCQ, it's a good investment. Fuck it, if you're playing it, go for it. If you're not looking to really play it at the moment, then leave it alone. You know, banless do do things, and there's no point in spending money if you're really worried about it. It's called losing money. So guys, please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts. Oh, well, guys, I'm out. Peace. The ride never well truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a trouble shuffle instant all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancole 40 for some awesome banger content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.